Welcome again, friends. So we have been able to work together and we have been able to recreate to the point of designing the logo mark. This is the logo mark. So here, we are now going to be moving a bit forward. We are going to be designing the icons and we are also going to be attaching the name to the logo mark. But before we design the icon, we attach the name. And before we do that, I really want to apologize for this last class. I should have used the exact hexadecimal color. Let me do that just now. So for these two green, the exact color is um, 39B54A. And for this, the exact color is FFC. And then we have it. So now that we have done that, we are including our font. Now you select your type tool, your type tool, and then we are typing the name of our that's a the, the logo type, and it is nurtured. Nurtured, nurture rather. So now that we have done that, we increase the font size and then we change it to our font. Our font, the font we use is our type is Century Gothic Bold. Escape it. Then there you have it. So this is it. We only have to resize and ensure that. While you are trying to resize, ensure you are pressing down your shift. Ensure you are pressing down your shift. zoom in a bit so we are seeing it clearly and now here it is this is nurture and the tagline is growth and well-being so we come out and we say growth and well-being and it's going to be in go century gothic regular we reduce the font size to 24 Sorry about that. Delete that. And then we bring it underneath it. Zoom in. We do this. The point is ensure it is visually, there's a visual balance in what you are looking at. Just ensure there's a visual balance. That this line, you are seeing an invisible line here, an invisible line here, that they are aligned. That's what I'm trying to say. So let me use 25. I think this is better. Have it okay let me correct this one to me this will be 30. yeah i think this is perfect i think this is perfect so here we have it we have our logo done nurture growth and well-being so let's group it you press your ctrl g or you right click and you press group and then we we'll drag it up so we have to create the icon but now that i want to create the icon but before we before we dive right straight into the logo uh, the icon design one of the things that is very important now is that we need to we am trying to align this vertically and horizontally so i do this we need to save save this and export we save this first this is very important in our i'm saving it in my own folder in my desktop i'm calling that folder practice a new folder i'm calling it practice Then I save it as logo design. Not sure. Yes. And now that I've done this, it's asking me. I say okay, yes. Now, now that I've saved that, we can move on to design our icons. Right now, remember when we want to design an icon, we have an icon grid to guide us it is very important to use an icon grid to guide yourself when you are designing an icon it is done professionally that way and it allows you um, place it for it allows for a movement from one platform to another it's better that way than doing it otherwise don't just do it free-handedly so this is what i'm saying you should notice that in your file you say um, open we give you an 
you can go back to your desktop in your new or an exercise illustrator folder your icon grid guide open the one 92 pixel now that i have opened this 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 let me quickly explain this you see this region that is a bit pinkish here is the square region this is what i'm working with this pinkish region not the dark one this because i want our icons to be in a square format because i want it in a square format i'm going to be using this pink region if you want it in maybe a rectangular format horizontally you use this region where my mouse is this particular region you use it if you want it um widened in a vertical format you can use um this rather widened in, in an horizontal format you use this sorry and this is vertical rather let me correct that this is vertical like this is vertical like this is horizontal but i want it in a square format so i'm sticking to this pink portion in between the that is here so now that i've gotten a portion i want to work with i'll try as much as possible not to allow it exit this exit this spot here 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 and here let me draw my own rectangle on that portion so you can see what i'm saying i'll try as much as possible to ensure it does not exit this region so i'm going to give it a bit of color i give it a very pale color remember i could just select this and then now that i've done that i would i don't want it to exit this region at all so i align everything i select everything rather and then what we do i lock it press my control 2 and then it is locked nothing moves again nothing moves again so let's start with the icon so i would, I would enjoy you to have a place where you can see any of the icon so you can just follow suit i'll be starting very i'm going from easy to a bit of tough but just relax as i said earlier you should relax you are not under any pressure you are practicing you are not under any pressure you are practicing so let's do this i want to start with the social life first i think that's very easy i hold down my shift i hold down my shift where i'm selecting my where i'm drawing out my circle and then i give it a color a color that i ensure should contrast maybe black so i drag that down it's okay and yeah and i select that again so i go back to my selection tool i align it to the middle here now that i've done that i want to redraw another circle but instead of going to my um shapes here or ellipse tool under my shapes i could just press my ctrl c and ctrl f to copy and paste on it see what just happened now i've copied and pasted back on it ctrl c and ctrl f allows you paste in place if, if i had done this if i had done um, let me go back if i had done ctrl c and ctrl v see what happens it just paste it anyway i don't want that so i say ctrl c and ctrl f paste it back in place i drag it holding down my shift sorry i hold that shift just a bit of it then i held down my alternate and shift again and then I, I drag it down again just a bit above it i want to see it so i just remove it i give it i give it yes i give it borders and then i remove the color so i can see where they are like okay this is perfect now that i've done this i just um i select these two again if I do that, let me draw. Let me draw. This is here. I want to draw my line to here. I come here, line segment to. If that's not what is there, it's a this region. You just select it, and I draw it underneath. Now that I've done that, I highlight everything again. Everything has been highlighted now. The three shapes, the two circles, and the line. And then I come to my shape builder. This is called the shape builder tool here. I select it now. I want to remove just follow suit i want to remove this interference in between if i just highlight on it i build a shape but i don't want this shape to be in the middle i want to click i want i want it to be an empty shape so i press alternate if you notice it is now a minus my cursor shows a minus underneath it if i leave it it shows a plus are you noticing it if i press alternate it's a minus so i want alternate to take it out like a negative um deduction introduction so i press alternate and i drag this oh sorry i drag this rather while i'm not holding shift let me go back i'm not holding shift i just i'm not holding alternate rather so i just do this 
Now I want this part to be taken away. So I hold down alternate it now. Or you just drag over it. Now the fact that I'm just clicking on it, it has converted this two shape into one now. We are now looking at one shape. One shape. So I go back to my selection tool. I click on this. And then, like we did before, Ctrl C, Ctrl F. I duplicate it. I hold down shift and I just drag it to the right. Or just drag it to the right, whichever works for you easier. And then I hold down shift and reduce it a bit. Drag it again to the right. Holding down shift. Further again, just a bit. Holding down shift. Now that I've done that, I do this. I take the two together and bring it here. You see that they have not exceeded at all. They have not exceeded this region at all. I could just increase it a bit. Just to ensure that it's, it's, it fits the edges of that yellow. I'm holding that shift and I'm pressing my arrow key to just move it. Okay, I'm just pressing my arrow key. I think this is better this way. So now that I've done this, see that everything is aligned down, up. So I come here again, I press my Ctrl C and Ctrl F, and then I move it to the right because we need space. We need space there. I move this first one further away again. And then now that I've gotten this. I click, I press my shift down while I'm clicking the other one so I can click two at the same time. So while I've done that, I just come to my shape builder again and then I take this out, I take this out, I take this out, and we have just this left. Now that I've done that, our first icon is ready. I could just take this. And I'm dragging it back into this workspace. And our first icon is ready. Let me do this. So there you have it. I could just add colors to this here. I'm selecting this color. And that is it. So what you have here is the basic process of designing an icon. It's very basic. So now that I've done this, I would like you to come back here and redesign the remaining icon using your own intuition all over again. And I'm sure you would find it fun or more or less an adventure. I'll see you in the next class.